Hey there, Megan Jansen with Employee Wellness Solutions Network. I'm so excited to continue this mission of enlightening and educating around the topic of employee and corporate wellness. I'm with Gord Hart today. Gord, I'm on a mission and thanks so much for being part of our mission to continue this conversation of elevating the profile of this very important topic. Gord, you've been um, in this people industry for over 25 years. You're president and CEO of Select Path Benefits and Financial. You're also a Right Path advisor. And let's start with that first question. What's a Right Path advisor? So Right Path advisor really is uh, a navigator, uh, someone who works with organizations and individuals along their journey uh, to whatever goal they wish to achieve. And our job is to provide elements of coaching, advice, knowledge, wisdom, and uh, giving people opportunities to make the right decisions at the right time. Excellent. So you've been doing this for a while. And wellness has always been, and wellness programming and health promotion strategies have always been around. In terms of what, what do you think and how does wellness really fit? within a benefits strategy? It's a loaded question, but I thought, why not start with that? Sure. So, you know, I think the evolution of the marketplace has moved from uh, a time when labor force was plentiful and um, automation would drive results for corporations to a time where the interpersonal, the human, in, the human advantage is critical for success to drive organizations forward. And organizations who see that holistic individual uh, not only as a tool in their process of business, but also as part of their overall uh, brand as an organization and their status within the community and the industry uh, is driving this movement to uh, all using all of the tools in the toolbox rather than one or two. Um, and the new workforce entrance is really looking at an organization on multiple levels. Mm -hmm. And that's really driving uh, corporate agendas towards that holistic individual for productivity and complete outcomes. It sounds to me as well that within this evolution of the industry, I mean, we've been in this industry as well for 15 years and early on, it was EAP all the time. And there's definitely a place for employee assistant programs, absolutely. Um, there are though, we find conversations now in this industry and working with benefits um, firms like Select Path is, the conversations are happening now with more of a health promotion prevention focus where there's still that integration with, with also EAP. Can you shed some light on kind of the importance of both or where, where, where in, in the world and in terms of workplace need are both? Where do they fit? So uh, I think globally, I think what we're finding is, um, managing the human machine requires more focus on prevention and building capacity to manage whatever comes your way. And so when we look at the microcosm of benefits, um, while an EAP can provide a reactive tool to start the process towards finding the care necessary to resolve whatever it brings the person to the product, building capacity and resiliency within the employees to potentially avoid uh, that acute uh, situation that will require that reactive solution is, is really the name of the game. And, uh, you know, we're finding that as our, our workforce population changes, their ability to be resilient and their willingness has changed. And so I think we've come back to a point in the marketplace where really focusing on putting more capacity, putting more tools in the toolbox of the employee pays enormous dividends in the long run. We still need acute care, uh, but really that whole idea of prevention and building capacity within an individual will create better outcomes overall. 
and uh, you know we can take whatever industry and we see the same issues. It's taken a long time for it to really hit the benefits industry, um, but I think it's here and it's here to stay and it's only going to grow. In terms of your um, thoughts around what these wellness, these conversations that are now a bit easier to have with employers because of the myriad of benefits of having a healthy workforce. How have you seen wellness evolve, change? What are some of the still the challenges this industry faces in terms of wellness? Let's shed some light on that. Yeah, you know, I think I don't think we have enough time to kind of define wellness because I think it's such a broad um, uh, area that encompasses things that we don't even really consider as wellness. And I think really, um, if we zero this down, it's really about changing behavior. Mm-hmm. And as we know, changing behavior is very difficult to do. And really that element that delivers coaching and support will tr- will change behavior. Well, yes, there's a readiness that has to be there. Uh, really, that element of advice and coaching and support is critical for success to drive the end goal of change of behavior. And I think while there are great gadgets and tools and nudging concepts, for the vast majority of individuals, it really does require some element of accountability, accountability to goals. And I think what's interesting is that's the business we're in. Uh, you know, we really are about education and nudging behavior and helping organizations navigate the decisions. And I think this is where it's perfectly folding in together. And uh, you can't say enough, you know, the, the talent challenge is real. I um, was talking to somebody the other day, ghosting is way up. You think you've got a candidate and all of a sudden they don't show up. And, you know, a lot of this has to do with corporations focus now on their culture, which is their internal brand. And uh, this goes back to, are you looking at your workforce holistically? And if so, how can we help individuals be more productive in life, which then by virtue will be more productive in the workplace? Well said. And I think that really encapsulates the whole thought of wellness being a corporate strategy and not just a project. And I think that's also our discussions now with employers is they really want to do something and they've tried something before and it failed. Um, uh-huh. And so if we can really fold this in, as you said, into a strategic approach that have different levels of engagement, different programs dripped in and layered on to support those, you know, people who might not be ready for a full-blown, you know, behavior change, but yet just need some of those reminders. There's a, there's a need to bring that into the strategic approach. So very well said, Um, wellness is no longer a project. It is definitely part of the strategy. Gore, do you have anything else to add as we tie up our discussion today? Um, I love talking about this. We could talk to you for hours about it. Um, But as we tie things up, any final thoughts um, in terms of what 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 you're thinking with this industry? Yeah, I mean, I think think overall, I, I think organizations, will have to rethink their, their talent management strategies. They really have to look at human resources from a strategic rather than a risk management perspective. And I think as they do that, they really need to open their eyes to that holistic employee and again, their success in life. And that success in life brings a level of engagement that no toy, tool, or compensation um, product and deliver. And I think once we get to that level of intimacy with uh, having HR be strategic and really be uh, a people champion, uh, I think, you know, we will have some success and we really will be able to move the needle, which in the long run is better for our entire population. We can keep people out of ERs and keep people off medications that are unnecessary and keep people healthy and we're gonna live longer, keep them healthier in retirement. That's 
that's better for everybody, not just the employer. And uh, I think that's really what I would love to see. Awesome. I'll leave it there. That's great. Thank you so, so much, Gord. You're such a busy man. And I really appreciate your time this morning and chatting about this very exciting industry as we continue to elevate this conversation around employee and corporate wellness. Thank you so, so much. All right. Thanks, Megan. Thanks.